Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep whilst my tummy rumbles because it's hungry so okay the title isn't all of that it's just let me bore you to sleep I'm feeling a little bit a little bit tired but I always do generally feel tired whenever I start to make these sessions hopefully my stomach will stop making those weird alien sounds whenever I have like a weird stomach movements or sounds coming from my stomach I always think back to the alien movie <laughs> just can't help it it's, uh, but nothing like that's ever happened to me so I hope everyone that's listening to this recording is well um, just want to thank those of you that are listening to my stuff. Thank you. That's it really, that was the whole... Yeah, that was pretty much all of it. I just, I do appreciate... I'm oh, sorry, I'm bashing the table. I do appreciate um, your support. Or, you know, by listening and there's different ways, different ways that you can support me but the biggest way is by listening I guess by actually you know you, that, that means you're part of something you're part of this with me whatever this is and I appreciate that I do sometimes get messages from people saying, especially on YouTube rather than anywhere else, but why, well, oh, you know, I wish more people knew about me, or knew about my work, and I suppose I, I wish that too, that would be nice to maybe be heard mm. so I could just have more people hearing me yawn but at the moment I'm you know the numbers are growing constantly um, so yeah I'm feeling okay I've had over 3,000 plays on SoundCloud and iTunes and Spreaker I've had over a thousand plays and downloads on there so in the last week so it's it's growing I'll be working on my website a little bit as well but I suppose I should should just remind you to only listen to me or watch my videos when you can safely close your eyes actually last night I had a I had a, a, a Google an email from Google telling me that somebody had tried to or no somebody had successfully logged into my Google account in America so I had 
had to change every single password for all the different places that I, you know, websites that I use. So that was a, a bit worrying. I deleted my Facebook and Twitter, deactivated those for now. Because I don't, you know, I'm just thinking if they get onto their you know what kind of uh, trouble they could cause whoever they are I do wonder why I wonder what's going on in someone's mind to want to hack my Google account or mine and what you know they're trying to get access to my bank account then they're going to be very disappointed <laughs> it'll be very it'll be a very big shock to them that's why I don't have to worry about identity theft because nobody would ever want to take my identity on Can you imagine someone wanting to be me, pretending to be me? No, it's not going to happen. So, the point of these thingy things that I do here these let me bore you to sleep sessions is really just that I just talk and you're gonna you just find yourself just really probably the more the more you hear my voice the quicker you may find yourself feeling tired even though there's a fire alarm or a car alarm going off somewhere in distance and sounds like there's a bit of wind outside and the sounds of it but I can't see from where I'm sitting in my big black squeaky chair I can't see the tree or the trees I can only see the roof of the other buildings and they don't sway thankfully I can tell by the trees moving around backwards and forwards and I was going to say up and down, but they don't, I guess, really move up and down. I'm talking about trees. I took, took Andre for a walk last night. Well, early, early evening. I don't know what time it was. But we went up to the... Oh, we went into the country down a country lane and I actually let him off his lead or I let go of the lead so I can stamp on the lead if I need to to stop him from running into the bushes and places I can't follow him but he loves to have a good run and I can keep up with him generally so we got in we, you know, we walked he ran and I walked and ran a little bit behind him and he, he loved being out there he was rubbing himself up against the grass and whenever he finds a little hole you know in the, in the mud or in the ground he likes to try and fit himself into that hole regardless of how small it is or how big it is he 
loves to just try and get inside the hole. It's a bit of a contortionist really. And we were just walking. At this point I was holding the lead because I, I let him run without me holding the lead. Otherwise that would have meant that I would have to be running with him. And I'm not, I'm not against running, but I can't be bothered, really. It's, uh, you know, it's not, I'm not morally against it, just, I can I can move fairly quickly when the need arises but I don't find that the need arises very often because what is there to rush around for for me I'm more focused on ways to relax and to calm my mind and body. Not, you know, all the time, but I do prefer feeling relaxed and calm. So I was just, I was just walking in and I had hold of his lead. I was holding his lead in my left hand because he was walking on the left side of me as we were strolling up this it's pretty much a dirt path really it was just uh, I imagine it's it's the side of the field which has been worn away probably by the dog walkers because I'm a, like an unofficial dog walker really even even though Andre isn't a dog I still go down the areas and use the the same pathways and park and places that dog walkers use so I sometimes get to say hello to the other dog walkers, I suppose you could call them. Although I'm not officially a dog walker, I kind of, I'm a ferret walker. You know, some people think that I actually take him out for me. What they don't realise is I take Andre out for a walk because he insists on going out every day, more than once a day if possible. But every single day, whether it's raining or snowing or, you know, there's You know, do I need to list all the different weathers? I suppose I could have made that sentence shorter, couldn't I? Whatever the weather, Andre wants to go outside. Whatever the temperature, Andre wants to go outside. And you know what? Even we had this little cold patch. Uh, last month and again he wanted to go out so I took him out and I had to wrap all up and I had two pairs of trousers on and didn't have any skis never never owned a pair of skis we don't really have that kind of weather here where skis are generally needed Even if I did have skis, where would I put them? 
they're, they're quite big they take up quite a lot of room just for something that could be used maybe you know a few times a year but even then because we have such little snow and it's a fairly flat area where I live I imagine if you if someone lived in Wales for example there's lots of hills in Wales so if it snows which I, it does snow quite a bit in that part of the country or that part of the world during the winter then I suppose if you had skis and snowboards and sledges and sleighs and whatever other names um, things that slide really I and mean, I suppose a big serving tray you know a big I don't know really what, what kind of things slide I suppose you could turn a table upside down couldn't you and use that but and tables aren't as cheap as they used to be I went into a place it's a while back it's a couple of years ago I think it was when I moved in here into this where I live now and I was looking for just looking at furniture thinking that a table would be maybe 30 40 pound and I was surprised at how much uh, a decent table with chairs actually costs. But luckily I have a table. It was actually my man's. So I inherited it. And it's big enough for four people to sit at it and eat kind of you know you, you wouldn't um, you wouldn't be able to read a book at the same time there's not enough room to I don't know if you like putting things onto a table you know, if you had football boots or whatever and you wanted to put them on a the table as well, you wouldn't be able to do that and have four people eating. But then probably perhaps wouldn't want to have football boots on the table. But I think there's there's a part of me that like a rebellious part, I think. Even at the grand old age of 47 there's still that rebellious part that perhaps wants to do things that I was told I wasn't supposed to do or wasn't maybe allowed to do when I was a child and by that I don't mean setting fire to the school or um, you know, doing silly things like that. Uh, I mean, um, things like putting the feet on the table, or what other things? Farting during the news. You know. What I noticed though, I noticed this a few years ago, because I've spent so many years living on my own. And I noticed that I was eating with my mouth open. I really just, really eating with my mouth wide open. And I never realised I did that. 
because I'd never do that in public. You know, I eat, my mouth is closed, and I don't know why it's such a a frowned upon thing. It's just food, isn't it? I mean, it's... It's just food being chewed. In a way, eating with your mouth open is a lot less problematic maybe than talking while you're eating. That's the thing is, if you're on a date, if you're in a restaurant, and you want to talk to the person, Maybe it's a first date or something like that. And you want to talk to them. And you might not want to talk to them, but I imagine some kind of verbal communication will be useful to uh, prolong the... Well, improve the chances of a second date, I guess. I don't know, but and then if you're both eating food and you're in public, and you ask the person a question and they answer and spit food all over you. I don't know, it might it might reduce the romanticness of that situation. Unless of course being covered in chewed up food is, you know, one of your turn ons, I suppose. I was thought my ideal, an ideal date, what would be an ideal date, a first date? I suppose it's different for everybody. I do wonder what it would be like to meet somebody Just and have that connection, you know, instantly. Have that instant want to be with them connection. I haven't had that for such a long time. I think it'd be quite nice. How's your body feeling at the moment? Even with these background sounds. Especially the sounds of that car that just bit its horn. And I could tell just by sitting here that that was somebody who just dropped off a friend or a family member and as they pulled away they bit their horn. 
Is it because they forgot to say goodbye? Probably not. being used in the distance and since I've moved here there's a house and the people in that house have been doing I don't know what it is they're doing but they're using power tools for the last three years. I sometimes wonder what they're up to. It's only a you know an average size house unless they're building down. Maybe it's, you know, it's a two bedroom house, but maybe there's another hundred bedrooms underground that they've built. Maybe they've got a swimming pool under there, a jacuzzi, a movie room, you know, a big theatre, maybe a larder, maybe a fish tank with. 17 sharks. Maybe they've got their own circus that performs in the main circus room. Maybe there's a train down there that takes them to London. Who knows what's going on in that house? I suppose I'll never know. So I've never, never really really understood power tools and then one day I went into this big big hardware store like a big massive hardware store with my father and he he had to get something I don't know what it was but I went in with him And I passed these drills and these various power tools and I felt myself start to get excited. I actually felt that I started to turn into a man. I was turning into a man with manly needs of making noise for absolutely no reason and to build stuff that I don't need I just had this feeling and I didn't like it there was some kind of like a ritual thing there was some inbuilt processes within me that were being stimulated it didn't feel right because I'm not really very manly in that way in the generalised cliched way 
of liking football or loving football or being interested in rugby or being interested in cars wanting to go to the pub and drink beer and no, not really making noise as much noise as possible in any way possible whether it's with a lawn mower or with a drill or with a hammer yeah I've never never been able to sort of get into that frame of mind uh, I sort of wanted to so that I could fit in at the same time, I don't want to be fake, you know, I don't want to pretend to be something that I'm not. Still not figured out what I am yet, but I've, you know, figured out lots of things that I'm not. Uh, when I was working my friend my boss actually he was absolutely in love with football absolutely loved football and he he taught kids so he coached young kids as well as well as supporting the local team and really really loved that was his life it was his, the love of his life not sure if his wife would be happy about that but so we went out so you know the whole kind of company met up and went out to the pub I think it might have been someone's birthday or something I don't remember And we went to this pub and there was football on and it was during the World Cup. So there was a lot of people in the pub. And I was watching it for a while. And it was very, very noisy in there, very loud, lots of grunting and the testosterone's put me off my off my wine. Off my chinzano. So there's a lot of uh Yeah, there's there's lots of activity. And then there was a break, I think it might have came to half time or, or there was like a little lull when there wasn't much going on. I asked my friend or my boss, I said, uh, which team is which? Who, you know, I think it was, I think which one is England? And someone heard me say that he was sitting at the bar and he wasn't with any of us but he was angry he was really it's like I just pulled his trousers down or something you know he was he, You know, I don't think I could have got a weirder reaction from him if I pulled his tra if he's pulled his uh, shoes off and his socks and started sucking his toes. I think he would have he would have been the complete like look of disbelief. If I'd have chucked a jelly at his face, it would have probably had less of an effect. 
so um, I didn't know which was which because I just didn't I don't follow football I don't follow rugby just don't I don't um, have any moral issues for for not following them. I just don't doesn't really interest me. And I'm you know I'm happy for people that can that can find the release that maybe they need by watching men in tight shorts running around like little kids you know it's 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 lovely to watch it's lovely to see the happy smiles on the football fans faces So you know, I feel feel it's good for them. Good for them. If it keeps them happy and they're enjoying themselves, then why not? Just I don't think I've ever watched a football match felt completely satisfied not in the sense of wanting more but I don't feel satisfied that I've really used my time in the best possible way that I could have done some laundry or clean the bath you know I was going to say I could have rehearsed signing my signature but I don't do that anymore I used to do that when I was little you know well Younger. I used to practice signing my name. And now, when do we need to sign our names? There's so much of the stuff is digital now, isn't it? It's just. You just type your name in. I don't even know how to sign my name anymore. to sign out and that I do still remember my name but you know I'm not signing someone else's like Edward Stevens you know I'm not I'm not signing someone else's details their name and I do I do recall my name it's just I used to have a, a sense of ownership of that particular signature that I used to use which I had rehearsed but it doesn't seem to be useful anymore which is it's not really a shame I don't think it's particularly important or anything but even going into the bank and 
you know, if I if I take if I put money in they don't want me to sign anything. But if I draw money out they want me to sign. But then they don't check the signature with the signature on the card. So putting money in, they don't care who I am. But then I suppose there's very few people that would actually put money into somebody else's bank account. Probably not going to happen, is it? You find someone's bank card on the floor, I suppose there's not many people that would find a bank card on the floor and think, I feel I'll put £200 in there, into their account. sounds of this it's about 43 minutes something like that so I'll probably bring this to an end to get this chair sorted out. Proper squeaky it is. Proper squeaky. And I'm gonna have I'm gonna treat myself to some hot cross buns because I haven't had any for a while. And the supermarkets generally have stopped making them because Easter finished two weeks ago but I went into a, a store today and they're still making them maybe they froze them and they're from you know maybe a month ago and they froze them and then they frost them and they sell them Maybe that's it, because they were very, very squashed. Very squashed. But I'm not going to let that get in the way of me enjoying the process of eating these sticky hot cross buns. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, when I finish this, I'm going to go into the kitchen and turn the grill on because because the hot cross buns I have to actually cut them in half and they don't really fit into the toaster very well and even if I can get them into the toaster it's not so easy to get them out of the toaster and it's also not it's not very easy to judge the level of grilling or toasting that's being done because sometimes it gets a little bit burnt. But when I, and also I can only do one at a time, 
I like to have two torque cross buttons, you know, two cut in half, so it's four pieces. So what I do is I grill them under the grill of the oven and just turn them and just watch and just turn them until it's at a nice level of grilled and then I put butter or margarine on top it's yummy it really is glorious it's one of my favourite things maybe I should use that as a story if, uh, you know, if I do meet someone that likes me and wants to have a date with me, maybe I can tell them that story about the hot cross buns. Because I think it, it shows an interesting side to me. Let's uh, let her know that, well, first of all, that you know about my eating habits and how I like to eat hot cross buns. Then it also shows that I think I'm creative with, you know, I'm able to deal with situations and problems as they arise. So I'm quite a practical person because the problem I had with the hot cross buns was you know I needed to do four at a time or you know four halves because if you do two halves in the, um, the you know the toaster then when they're ready you put the other two halves in but then when they're ready, the first two halves may be cold or cool down to a level of not. So not to have optimal enjoyment of those particular hot cross buns. And I know you can't, you know, you can't eat all four at the same time, but hopefully, you know, they'll all keep enough warmth to be able to enjoy the process of eating those hot cross buns, you know, as you know, during during that period of, of feeding myself, so to be able to, I guess, express that I'm able to think up a creative solution whereby I grill all four slices, all four halves of those hot cross buns at the same time underneath the cooker grill shows that I'm creative, I'm inventive I'd say quite exciting it's a quite an exciting story to tell I probably shouldn't start with that, I shouldn't shouldn't lead with that story because I need to then find something else to to beat it, you know, that's even more exciting and I'm not sure what I what I could come up with. I suppose I could continue with the story of the hot cross buns and talk about the f my first memory of the eating hot cross buns even though I probably did eat them when I was a kid but when I was 17 or 16 16 yeah I was probably still 16 wow 16, 2000, no, 1987, I moved into a flat, the first flat that I ever lived in of my own, and I rented it off of my boss. And I remember that April, so I was 
17 the following August, so that April I moved in, still 16. I, I ate hot cross buns and a cup of tea and my friend was with me, I had a friend and I was watching the words of gummage on television and those were the days before DVD players, there was no internet, there was no, you know, so there was no um, internet channels, no Sky, no HBO, but not, not in my country, no Netflix, none of those stuff, no Amazon. And I think I did get a video recorder at some point. I did when I was living there, but at this point I didn't. Just had a television. I think it was, I think it was a black and white television. So I was watching Words of Gummage, eating my hot cross buns with a cup of tea. It was a Sunday morning. And I think I was sitting in a fairly bare room, just on a chair. I'm not sure if me and my friend took time, turns sitting in the chair, whether or not there might have been two chairs, or perhaps one of us sat on the floor. I don't recall the exact details. But I do remember the hot cross buns. And I've always, since that moment, had a like a fondness for hot cross buns, a nostalgia. Um, just a nice feeling connected to them. I suppose I could lead with that story, couldn't I? be like the opening story for a date, if I go out on a romantic evening meal with somebody and take the, a list of rules as well I suppose. The thing is, if you have a list of rules, it's okay to have those, but what if those rules don't fit in with the other person? So I might think, oh, I, there's something I shouldn't do, but what if the person I'm with likes a man to pick his nose at the dinner table? You know, what if she likes to hear farts? This is just hard to, hard to, to really, to prejudge. Especially if it's on a first date. Anyway, I think that's probably the end of this here thingy. As I said at the beginning, it's just me talking about stuff. And the more you hear my voice, the more relaxed and calm you feel, the more tired the easier it is for you to just let go completely. And sleep deeply. So that's the end of this session. Thank you for listening and watching if you're watching on YouTube. Please share this if you like what I do. Share my work with other people. 
friends, family, complete strangers, if you like. And I'll speak to you next time. What's a love? Bye.